Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? Today, we're going to be controlling our little mobile robots powered by Arduino. Uh, these robots, we're going to try and make them move in a straight line, use the sensors on board the robots to make them follow a path, and then eventually have them avoid obstacles using sensors. Um, we've got a worksheet we're following, which is in the description below. And without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Ariel, who will get us started. Indeed. So, uh for today's exercise, we're going to start with actually sort of getting to know our servos. We, we're using modified servos uh, as motors, essentially. And uh, the thing about these servos is that they are modified to rotate 360 degrees instead of just giving us an angle. I understand. And that means that we need to also uh, calibrate them because of the way in which this modification has been done. Okay. So goal for today, calibrate the servos. So essentially, we have to take a look at the, the worksheet and find out what it is we're supposed to be, be doing, or rather how we're supposed to be doing this. And we see that we are going to be using the servo library here. And there's a couple of, of uh, ways in which we can make the servo turn. And also, we need to sort of record the midpoints for the, for the two servos. Okay, so the, the logical process makes sense. So we're going to... Firstly, control a left servo, which is a left motor. Yeah. Uh, the right servo, right motor, and attached. What does that mean? It means take control of it, does it? Yeah. It okay. just tells the, the library what uh, pin the, okay. uh, the actual servo is connected right to. Right means do something to it. Is that correct? Yeah. Make okay. the servo turn at a given rate. All right. So let's get started. Excellent. So with that, let's jump down into our editor. So you see that I'm using a third party editor. It's called Atom. It's nice, but it's all sort of going through the regular Arduino IDE. So the Arduino IDE is still the one compiling, still the one uploading all the code. I'm just using a uh, so, 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 so what you're essentially saying is exactly the same. It's prettier only, but it does the exact same thing. If we put this code into the IDE, it'll still run? Yes, exactly. Excellent. It's just another way of looking at it. All right, so looking at your screen now, I've seen mm. what you've done. As said on the worksheet, include our servo library, okay? Yep. And define button one as pin four. Yes. Essentially, if I'm not mistaken, this is us giving pin four a nickname, calling it button one. Exactly. And the same thing we're doing with pin number two for button two. two. And... and Four. Pin number five and six, we call them left and right servo, servo L and servo R, correct? Exactly. We are labeling them, so to speak, just to, to help us out and, and uh, clear things up a bit. Okay, so left servo. So as we said, we're going to first attach. Is that correct? That's correct. So, so, so where do we begin? Where do we attach? Exactly. Uh, so we need to have something to attach to, right? So uh, for the servo library, we say that we want an, uh, a, uh, an instance of that library. And uh, we call that left servo. And we make another one that we call right servo. So these yep. are, in essence, like uh, you could think of them as variables. Okay. They function much like the serial uh, library for that matter. Uh, so the first thing we should do is attach, that's correct. Uh, so we say left uh, servo attach. Now we could say left servo attach six, but we have a nickname. So yes. uh, sorry, let me see. Servo L is our nickname for the left servo. Okay. And uh, we do the same for the right servo, we attach that to pin number five, also referred to as servo R. And these, the fines are usually in capital letters. That's just yeah. a convention to make it easier to follow. I understand. So, so following the worksheet, um, yeah. it did explain that we need to find that midpoint where it stops spinning. That's correct? Exactly. So okay. the midpoint is not going to be at the normal midpoint, so to speak. So we have to search for it. And it's, uh, the worksheet's given us a range. And we can see that the range is, is somewhere between 75 and 105. And so we need to step through a range yep. from 75 to 105 and uh, simply... Find the point when the wheel the stops point. spinning. Exactly. Okay, so how do we do that on the, on the code then? What do we do? A for loop, naturally. Let's get started then. So for a for loop, you usually start at zero, but we could start anywhere. So let's say uh, that our iterator should start at 75. Yep. And we should run through uh, iterations until we're at a point where i is... Um, Sorry, i is less than or equal to 105. You know, it's really interesting because when I did this myself, I started from zero and I counted all the way yeah. to the top because I actually had a delay. Was that correct? I made it wait a second. So I had to yeah. wait from zero all the way to 
I don't know how many seconds, but it took a very long time. What you've done here is you've started from the range they gave us, which makes yep. things faster. We've Clever. just uh, narrowed it down, so to speak, because we know it's supposed to be somewhere in that range. So anyway, while we're in the loop, we need to tell the servo to assume a speed that's connected to uh, the, the values we're given here. Okay. So, so uh, we're just going to uh, say that for each time through the loop, uh, Let's start with left servo, right? Yep. Let's forget about right servo for now. Uh, so let's start with... Easier to do with, one at a time. Exactly, to oh, conceptualize it. Break and we don't know what's happening. Exactly. So let's say uh, left servo, we can write to this, right? We remember from the, the worksheet, we have a method that's called write. Okay. And so we're going to try that out. We're going to say uh, write, and what we want to write is I, basically, because that represents either 75 and up, up until I understand. So each time through the loop, right i, and then we need to give us some feedback, right? Because uh, as it stands now, it's just going to be writing uh, 75 and assuming a speed and then writing another, uh, writing 76 and then assuming speed and then continue up to 105, but it's not okay. really useful. We need a bit of feedback. So there. I'm guessing that serial.print and we're going to print exactly. what it's doing, what number it's on currently. Exactly. Excellent. Let's do that. So we could say serial.print uh, current value. Yep. And then we could say serial.print line and just print i, right? Yep. And if we leave it like this, it's going to run through it really quickly, yep. uh, naturally. So we need to delay it a bit. So we're simply going to put in a delay. And let's say that we put in a second delay, right? Yep. Uh, and that's going to be expre expressed as a thousand milliseconds. Okay. And uh, so now the the uh, loop is going to go through it once every second and let us know what what the value is, and then jump on to the next one. I understand. I mean, so that's essentially this part of the task. If we look at the worksheet, the next one was that when we calibrate using the buttons. Exactly. So this is a sort of a crude way of approaching it. We can now say that, yeah, we could duplicate the for loop and just uh, substitute uh, right servo in there instead. Okay. But uh, we want to sort of uh, do it a bit more elegantly. Okay. So uh, seeing as, as we're going to be doing the same thing with the right servo, yeah. let's put this loop in a uh, function instead, right? Okay. Functions are going to be more and more uh, sort of useful as we go along at this point. Okay, let's do so, that. So uh, we need to define a function. Let's say that we uh, want to, it to return an int, and uh, we could call that find servo midpoint. And uh, we need to tell that function what servo we are talking about. Yep. And long story short, it expects a servo object and we'll just inside here call it servo because it doesn't matter if it's the right or the left one, right? Yep. The function just does the same thing anyway. And so we're going to be uh, here pasting in paste all that the loop wrote earlier, from before. Which we, know, which we know works, okay. And uh, Essentially, now we should be able to here yeah, say um, find servo midpoint and send in the left servo. Right? Okay. That's the uh, that's the idea here. Whoops! I forgot to change something important here. The point is to have the find servo midpoint function use any servo object that we tell it to, right? But as we can see at the moment, it's using the left servo global object. So we should change this to servo, as that is the object we send in as an argument to the function. And this is what allows us to work on different servos, after all. If we, for instance, instead send in right servo now, then we see that while the function is still doing the same operation, it's now working on a different servo object. So keep this in mind as we continue. Anyway, back to the video. Okay, I get what's happening here. So the first thing that's happening is we like, let's go from the top, actually. So we've defined the ser the library, the servo. Include the we, library, We've yeah. renamed our buttons or given them nicknames, or our pins, giving them nicknames. Exactly. And then after that, we left servo, right servo, yep. void setup, serial begin 9600. We sh all know what that means by now. Yeah, it's... Now we attach the left servo. And here, we created a function which essentially runs this code here. Yes, that's all it but does. But when we get to this point, we're just calling this code to run here. Yeah. So if I'm not mistaken... To do that for the right, all we have to do is copy this, paste it underneath. Indeed. 
um, call it right and was calling the exact same code here to work for the right hand side without having to write all the code exactly. again. Exactly. So and essentially we've generalized it just a bit to where we could tell it to, to do this for any servo. I understand. So if we had 12 servos connected, and we can, if yeah. you want, connect 12 servos, we could, could uh, have it do that for each servo. I understand. No problems. Brilliant, so let's do that. So let's get started then. Um, let's copy the light bit. Right. Just gonna copy that up, yeah. And say, right servo. And by now we can also Attest bring- that right servo we bedroom commented out earlier. Exactly, bring that into play, right? And as it stands now, our code will let us go through the, uh, the values uh, that the midpoint could be yes. among uh, for both the uh, left and the right servo. But think about it, when we are at the point where the left servo has has arrived at the at the midpoint, and we're like, okay, that's the midpoint. That's eighty four, or whatever. Then we're still gonna, as it stands, have to wait for back, it to, to get to cycle back again. Yeah, so get I'm to the guessing end. Guessing this is where the buttons come in, where exactly. we tell it to do something. Exactly. Essentially, to stop. Well, stop. Speed up the process in general. Just like. Uh, don't bother even going through the, the top of the range here. Okay. So, uh, as we should be familiar with, uh, the way to read a button is to do a digital read. Yes, right. Use the inbuilt function there. And of course, in order to sort of determine if, if the button is on or off, we need yeah. an if statement. Yes. So, we're going to write if digital read, and we have a shorthand. It's called button one. Right here, and you're ready. Uh, if digital read button one equals now, I remember this low. from our lectures. Low being an alternative to one zero. The whole low high yeah. being on off. So we're just simply saying if it's pressed yes. or if it's not pressed. That's what low high. For our particular robot, right? The uh, the button reads as low, falls off, whatever zero when it's pressed, I understand. and when it's not, it's on. So if you want to know why that is, uh, there's a, there are loads of tutorials on the internet, especially uh, related to the Arduino uh, specific implementations that are out there. Uh, not really important at this moment, we just need to know that that's uh, the way our robot's set up currently. And so what we want to do when we read that the button's pressed, right? Yep, we uh, want it to tell us, don't we? So we it want tells us that my current reading is I? Yeah, so okay. and a, a way to achieve that, right, is to uh, simply uh, record the value of i, yep. the midpoint value yep. at that point, and uh, send that back to our setup function, maybe, because okay. it's always tidy to sort of... Uh, I'm not sure I quite understand, but yeah, sh sure. show me first, write it out, and then maybe we can try work out exactly. what it's doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, in this function, just return i. So what's happening here is that even though we're inside a loop, even though we're inside a function, when I say return, that uh, sort of reports to the function. So I'm here asking the function to drop everything that's going on and just return i. I understand. We don't have to break from the loop. We don't have to wait until the end of the function. Yep. We could say that right now, drop everything you're doing, just return. Return I understand. To That's a, that was another sort color. of magic sort of word I had seen people use, return. I didn't quite know what it meant. I just took it for, 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 for on faith, but it's good exactly. that you explained that one. Yeah. And so that means that this function will return that integer. And up here, we see that we have just called this the, the, the function. We haven't actually bothered with, with uh, uh, what it's actually returning. Yeah. But now that allows us to say, for instance, uh, int... Uh, left servo midpoint equals find servo midpoint. So I understand. Right. Okay. Th that's beginning to make sense now. So we need to do that for the right as well, don't we? Yes, exactly. So yep. essentially what this uh, does is that it sets up a new variable and it fills the content of that variable, if you will, with whatever this function is returning. Yes. And down here we see that we returned the midpoint. I so understand. Yep. again, when it comes to, to how this is all flowing, uh, we see that, that 
uh, when the the uh, uh, servo library is writing uh, a certain speed or giving a certain speed to the servo, uh, it prints out on the serial port the current speed is this. Yes. And if we are happy that it's standing still, yeah. we can press a button. And if we keep that button pressed until the end of the delay here, yeah. our sort of window of, of opportunity, one second, the window of opportunity, then it will immediately return, return. that value to our set of function where we called and it writes that, that that value does it currently it doesn't right because it's just storing it in the variable here I understand. but okay. a natural goal for us is to summarize at the end of the calibration uh, that hey we've found I've, these I've done this bit these yes. are the numbers okay so let's do that then indeed Our midpoint values are left server midpoint, and similarly here we could say right server midpoint, right? Okay. So this will print that out at the end. But this uh, sort of brings up another piece of of this that we need to tell the user what server we're actually operating on because right now this it's just going to print the current value is but for what server? i was just about to ask that exactly yes. right so this is when the sort of generalization comes in handy because in our setup function all the the major lines are drawn right okay. while the the uh the uh, uh, sort of hard work is done in a separate function but we don't okay. need to see that up here we just need to say that okay at this point uh we should let us uh, our user know that we are calibrating the left servo. Yeah. All right. Again, similarly down here. Calibrating the right servo. I'm assuming this is good practice because if your code breaks, you know where it broke as well, or where yes. it stopped working. Yes. Exactly. It's telling you what it's doing as exactly. it's going along. Okay. And that's something that you'll keep returning to where you want to, to be verbose, especially in the beginning when you're uh, threading on unknown territory, but it's like you need just to know what is actually happening, right? Okay, so what do we do next now? Let's take a look. So we're at the point where I think we should actually try this out, shouldn't we? We should. So what you'll see over in the Arduino ID is that when I hit a verify here, that means basically compile the code, yeah. it's gonna update automatically. To reflect what we've been doing in the uh, doing with the actual file, right? And you saw actually it compiled without any errors. Yep. My lucky day. So what we can do right now is that we can uh, upload this to the Arduino. It's already connected. Yep. Now an interesting thing here is that we see that since we've attached both servers at the same time, both are going to be turning because what happens here is that both are sort of. Um, um, set up with the default midpoint value yeah. to stop them turning. But this highlights exactly the problem that we are solving, right? The right servo here, even though we're doing the left calibration, yeah. it's turning. So this can, uh, can be fixed fairly easily by just saying that, again, part of the control flow and how, uh, highlighting how important it is to, to think about that. We shouldn't attach the right server until we're actually ready to work on to it work, now. I understand. So we do it in a logical way. Okay. And we could also sort of visually separate this a bit more. Mm -hmm. uh, and we could uh, put the uh, left server attachment uh, in a logical cluster, if you will, right? So if we go around again and remember to save this and then upload it to the Arduino, we should now see that the left wheel is going to be spinning slowly and ever so slightly going to be coming to a standstill yep. and the right one should not move. Okay, let's try it. Okay, so we're pretty much done, are we? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so so because I'm the newbie here, I'm just going to summarize what I think is happening here. Sure. So starting from the very beginning, um, we include the library. We've been given this. Yep. Here we redefine the buttons or give them nicknames as I call them. Yep. Here we we've got our left server, our right server, void yep. setup. We know what that is setting the serial port. I'm actually going to skip this for now. Come back to it. 
we created a function here, yep. which has a for loop, which uses our range 75 to 105, increments of one. Um, we didn't do what I did before to start from zero because it didn't need to. Um, and then we write to the Lyft servo, we print what the current value is. We're explaining every time we go through a number, 75, 76, yeah. it's telling us what it's doing. And then we get to, this delay simply says, do this at human pace, because we don't work at computer yeah. pace like the Give computer us a, pace does. Give us a bit of time to, to react to it, right? And then here, we've got the buttons we found earlier, the buttons we declared earlier or renamed earlier here, yeah. where if that button is pressed, yeah. low, which simply say we've pressed the button, yeah. um, then return I, or return that mm. I, which is the integer we, well, it's here. That, right there. Yeah. That I there. Now, this is then used up here again, where I skipped earlier, come back to it, on the, where is it? It's right there. Right yeah. over here, where this yes. is that function we called here. But what we did is we created a variable, yeah, um, which we called left server midpoint, yeah. and then we, we said that is equals to the function we created here, which simply returns when it's done left server. Yeah, so an interesting point here is that that is, we're saying that left server midpoint, the variable, the dumb variable, is going to be equal to the uh, what the function returns, because yeah. this is a function call. So just to, to, to uh, make this absolutely clear, we could say, uh, that we simply have an int uh, and then that it should be equal to this. There's nothing special about putting that on one line. It's just... Uh, I understand it's just right? how you've done it. Yeah. yeah. So it's just, uh, again, you're just calling this, the function that we defined uh, or declared underneath there and uh, we are putting the, the contents of that in our variable. I understand. That allows us uh, uh, further down to print that out in a summary. And I suppose the only thing I'll do from here before I move on to the next stage is I'll write comments, comments for myself to understand yes. exactly what is going on here. So if I come back to it in a week or so, it all makes sense. Exactly. That's a really important Thank part Thank you of this. very much, Mr. Ariel. Let's move on to the next part. My pleasure. See ya.